70s, four regular guys from New York got together with the intention of putting the energy back into rock and roll. They called themselves the Ramones, and although most people credit them with being the true innovators of punk and new wave, they never did manage to break commercial ground. Until now. Their film Rock and Roll High School has given them a lot of exposure, and the legendary Phil Spector has produced their latest album, End of the Century. They've also got a single on the charts, Baby I Love You. The Ramones were in Toronto recently, and I asked them how they got involved with Phil Spector. For the past two years, every time we go to California, we'd uh, meet with him and talk with him. He came to see us. He had been following our career, and he wanted to work with us. And each time we'd go out there, we would talk and to make sure that he understood what we were doing and didn't want to uh, change anything. And Why did you want him then initially to produce stuff for you? Well, initially he wanted to work with us, but uh, we were always big fans of his, you know, so we, you know, it was an honor to work with, uh, you know, he's a legend. Yeah, yeah for sure. So, he's great. Yeah. So you didn't have yeah. to compromise so at we'll all? live on forever. No, no, no compromises. No, it, was, um, it was all like... Uh, we had the same objective in mind as he did, and we were looking for the same thing. We just wanted to make a good, you know, the best record we could make. And it wasn't like uh, him dictating to us what we should do and how we should arrange the songs or anything like that. Like we went in with uh, knowing exactly what we were going to put down, and uh, it was great. It was really relaxed, and uh, it was <laughs> tough, uh, minor things, but, you know. You could, you could take we weren't there. Music. It was relaxed. This is right. music louder than we can. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> He's an expert at right, high get there for and nothing. I, and it was like an ice box, you know, so... Yeah. <laughs> so did you see yourself working with him again? It was that kind yeah. of relationship? Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was fun, you know. Exciting and wild. <laughs> when you guys got together... It was Experience. <laughs> it was Adventure. Prob probably back in about uh, 74, when you originally got together. Yeah, somewhere 74. <laughs> You were innovators, obviously. I mean, you still are, but so many people now are crediting you with the whole, uh, well, you know... they should, you know. <laughs> you do. You do like to take all the credit for what's happening yeah, in music. Yeah, well, we deserve days. it, you know. Well, but it credit, wasn't... Credit what credit's <laughs> due, you know. It probably wasn't until you went over to Europe that uh, things really started to happen. I mean, like, what, what was happening here, or, let's well, say, in North America for you at the time? Were you just, like, people looking at Nothing you like you were nuts Nothing was happening anywhere, you know? It was, like, we were, we were the only people doing what we were doing. Nobody else was doing what we were playing. And when we went to England, they were listening to pub rock, uh, Dr. Feelgood and stuff like that. And it wasn't until after we left, and you know, we played two sold-out shows. And um, I guess the more hipper people, like uh, the people that now are in The Clash and people like that, you know, they had gotten our import album, and they were in, in tune to what we were doing. And after we left, um, the whole British invasion kicked off. The whole, uh, the Clash, the Pistols, uh, the Jam, the Damned, you know, Damned, right? So you feel responsible for that? Well, out of the new, st of the new thing, yeah. The, the new generation, yeah, I mean, the we new revolution were, or something. We were the first of the new things, but uh, I mean, they started calling it whatever punk rock and all. But um... we could always come here very early in our career and play, though. We, Toronto's one of the first scene. places that we came to. Uh, yeah, like outside right. New York, it's you know. It's a local scene, you know. Like right. Original yeah. groups, there's always something happening. A lot, of, a lot of energy here. We've probably been here about eight times in places like upstate New York. We went into twice. You, you find know. you get wider <laughs> acceptance than in a place like Toronto than maybe some other places in the States? It, 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 mm, in not, the beginning, not, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a good city. It's a good city. It took a little longer in America because America's so huge, you know, and uh, it's different. You they know? weren't looking for anything new, really, in America. Yeah, they were, they were you know, very content. Well, how did you manage to emerge out of that void? Where did you get your inspiration from? Everything was getting soft. There was no more pop-type music. There was a pop scene in England, still, in the early 70s with uh, Slade and Gary Glitter and things like that, but America wasn't having that stuff. And uh, so just started doing what we, what we do. You were ahead of your time at the time, don't you think? Uh, yeah, that's why I guess it's taken so long, and now you're finally getting acceptance. And, and it's uh, like six years later, and now the world's kind of caught up to us. You know, you only, exactly. you only, you always had critical acceptance because uh, you know critics look for new things, and not really stuck on the same thing. But uh, you have to get the general acceptance. Yeah, it's been hard. And it seems that now groups, it's like, you know, they've been out for like a year and they're like making millions of bucks. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, do you resent I mean, that? Well, it's, it's good and you, you, you know, you, 
it sort of bothers you when you see somebody have it so easy, but it's good for you because if somebody else succeeds, that just makes it uh, seem more acceptable to everyone, you know, like when somebody like the Knack has a hit and they're considered new wave and the cars and Blondie, um, it just makes a bigger, bigger market, I guess, more people are interested. And then in, people uh, are also like curious about where it all, all originated from and then, you know, we're focused upon, you know, but, um, you know, like it, it bugs you, but you just gotta, you know. You know, it shows the, it on, shows the radio that uh, that there's an audience for this stuff out right, there. Right. I mean, if they didn't have this acceptance, those groups, they would make it just that much harder for you. So, it's, it's, you know, it's okay. Well, it's it's like uh, taking over the world now, and also, <laughs> it's uh, we turned the airwaves around. You know, whereas now uh, the new music is heavily dominating the radio, as where before it was heavily dominated by. Uh, heavy metal and disco, like, you know, foreign and total people like that, you know? And now those people, are, they're all shaken up because um, they don't know which way to turn. Like last year, they could have gone disco, but this year, they don't know what to do, you know? So it's good. Get rid of them, too. <laughs> <laughs> last summer, you performed at a heavy metal concert here in town, the Canadian World Music Festival, and you didn't get that great a response. I understand the audience gave you a bit of a hard time. Yeah, well, we shouldn't have been playing, really, with those, with Aerosmith and uh, Ted Nugent. I mean, we think those groups are good, I mean, you know, for what they do. Yeah, they were watching us, and they even said, oh, sorry that this happened. Yeah, they, Steve Toller came back. This wasn't the right billing. I mean, it's, you know, um, yes. I mean, those, those are the best groups uh, doing what they, what they do. I mean, you know, Aerosmith and Ted Nugent. But uh, this isn't right. The, the audience was a little rude. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> I was there. We right expected it. I mean, and we said when, we, when they told us to play and we said oh you know it's gonna be uh crazy and <laughs> they said no don't worry canada will be different you know and they oh, said yeah. no no you know kids are the same but yeah. they should have had as a hook you know and <laughs> give us each yeah, the yeah, hook yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> off the stage oh but no well you left after you a, little do. a couple of songs anyway no, you only we, did what four did, songs or we something? did 40 minutes no we was left it? early didn't we leave yeah, early until my guitar Cretan. stopped working i made a mistake in crete and i went crazy <laughs> and, you know, and, you, and you just took off your guitar and said, forget it. Uh, it was... How when they you start feel? doing that to you, that really makes you nervous. Then everything really? starts falling apart, you know. How did you feel when you walked off the stage? I like, was, you I, was, I, I was optimistic pretty much until uh, the bottles started coming, you know, and then I was, like, ducking them. <laughs> but, but uh, you know. What do your families think of all this now? I mean, what do they think of the whole... They're disgraced. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, my mom had to leave town. Ever since they heard about punk rock. Back up and leave town. Were they supportive of you when you uh, first started in the early days? Be well, when you first start playing the guitar, no, they're never supportive, you know. They say, you know, you don't have to play a song, you know, it's a bunch of noise. But then once you see you starting to succeed and having fans and albums, then they're right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of life? Fairweather friends. What yeah, kind they, of they check the record stores to make sure that your album's there, and if it's not, <laughs> they give the guy a hard time and all that. You know? I know they buy, they buy the album presents for people. Yeah, right, right. Why? Well, a good stab in the back. <laughs> oh, really? Because really? really? I know all parents really hate rock. Mm. I mean, like my parents are old people, so maybe some parents don't. <laughs> How do you think your music's developed over the years, and where do you see it going in the next little while? It's hard to tell. I mean, each album you try to make it a little different, and you we're doing well here though now. Our album, it's um. Getting played on all the all the top stations, right. Chum and all. And you know, it's great. You just try to make your channel different so that your fans don't grow tired and that you don't get tired of it. And you know, you always try out new ideas. Is there ever the danger of losing that raw edge? Maybe. You know? Not for us. Nah, I don't think so. I doubt it's it. It's just our chemistry. You know, it's uh, we're not like other people. The new music will be right back after these messages with ZZ Top. You're watching.